Hey guys, this is Coach Chris. Welcome to my channel where we break down international level fights for strategies and tactics that you can use in your own matches. And today we're actually watching a domestic match, or I guess national level match. This is the U.S. National Team Trials um, Finals um, under 68. I actually don't know either players, and this is my first time watching it, so we're going to break it down. I'm going to see what kind of strategies we can extract round per round, and kind of um, if you're a coach or if you're a player, kind of ideas for training or things that you should be looking for as your uh, as your match progresses so you can come up with counter strategies um, against the other people. So this is the final. Ideally, when you're in this situation, you have some kind of scouting report, some kind of film, or something like that to have a game plan against versus going in completely blind. As the tournament progresses, or if you guys just want to record top seeds, that's generally the good way to go is look at who the top seed in your division is. Have a buddy or a parent or friend go over there, record the match, see who wins, uh, see what his weapon was. Figure out how you would counter that weapon if you were to fight that same guy. And then I would recommend watching the next round as well because the strategy against someone taller or smaller uh, might change. Also, the game plan against someone you know versus someone you don't know also may change. So watching it multiple times is generally a good idea. Anyway, this is my first time watching this, like I said. So let's get into it. You guys have been so on it. Let's see how it goes. All right. So one from, one from Texas, I believe. Uh, the other is from Georgia. Blue, Rogers into red. Let's go. Last final. Nice pressure here from red. Let's see how it goes. Solid. Nice back leg. Nice try for the cut there, too. Honestly, good job here by Red. Looks like, well, obviously, the red side, is, the right side is more active. A uh, little concerning. For, oh, nice. Okay. I was going to say a little concerned that he was using the same cut so often. Um, it's relatively safe, so not too much um, against that. But going at different targets or and kicking it at different lengths or different intensities, those kind of variations would help keep him a little bit more safe in the future, I think. Good job of him, though, here to, to switch for the punch. I think against someone who has a little bit more of a ready counter for that, the doing that multiple times is a little bit dangerous. If Blue had a counter for that kind of cut ready, it would have been a lot easier for him to implement. But it doesn't seem like he does, so Red has free reign over doing this as many times as he wants. Nice punch there. If I were blue in this situation, so it seems like red does a lot of poke, a lot of poke. He does have a slide back left back leg. I would start poking and then short flicks to the face. Start occupying this space here. It looks like blue likes occupying. I did this in one of my other videos. Blue likes occupying this space here between the two. Uh, he likes having his leg up. He likes being the one in the dominant position. So if I were red, I would start occupying. I would start getting my leg a little bit higher. Let's see if I can move this to the side. I would start moving my leg, flicking a little bit higher and targeting both here and here. So that way it almost creates a, it almost creates a threat wall of if you go into this distance, if you dive for the punches, you can like there's a chance you're gonna run into my foot. And it doesn't have to be fast, doesn't have to be super committed, but just the idea that that option is there and that you might flick to that and use that option at a certain point should help ward someone who's bringing a strong offense off against you. Oh, I need to switch this back to a mouse. There we go. Forward, fast forward. Something about a card very early in the match. I'd one point, uh, one point for punch. I can see that. Good. Nice job, Blue, taking taking back the offensive initiative. Nice try for a punch there. Good job switching it up here. Um, realizing that he was not dictating the pace of the match. Nice try. Oh, and Red scored, though, unfortunate. I wonder what... I just, I just want to see where that happened. Like, obviously, in a match, you don't really get this kind of a breakdown. But... Here, 2020, we get to see hindsight. Is 2020, we get to see where this where this came up. Ah, it's on the follow up. So here, after the punch, he leaves himself a little bit open. He's going 
If the opponent's scooting back, I can see him trying for the clinch here. I think that was just a misread of distance, which left him open. I would say don't... Unless they stop moving backwards, don't try and commit too quickly into doing that clinch. Because situations like this might happen where you get kicked underneath your hands. Nice cuts. I like mix it up by punch. Oh, okay. Never mind. The blue obviously wants these inside points. I would say one other option he could do, he may do in the future, is the Hosini clash, where instead of when you cut, instead of just cutting like this, you cut with your knee up, and then you kind of just move forward aggressively with your knee up as a kind of a shield to block below you while you get into the clinch and then try for something. Um, I don't know. I think in general what blue could have done in the situation here, I'll rewind it a tiny bit. He had two great pushes here. Not here. This is a good attempt. He has a good cut here. Boom. Another strong cut. Boom. Right here, what he could have done, because it's going to be, if he does it a third time, it's dangerous because red for sure should have some kind of red or counter ready um, or is going to change defense because if red does the same thing three times in a row, that's that's not good on either side. So red, blue could do the situation. He already uh, went forward once. He went forward twice with a hard cut. If he did a hard motion forward, he could maybe get blue to bite on something and then follow up. Or, uh, sorry, if Blue were to do a hard motion forward, he get Red to maybe bite on something, set up for op ball, or if he wants to slide back and just reset and uh, reapply pressure that way to reset the game, that would have been an option. Uh, red here takes the initiative. I was just saying, I'm mentioning this because it's a missed opportunity, I think, for Blue to maybe, maybe have set something up. See, he does it a little bit, but he doesn't, it's not too committed. One, two, and then right here, if he did a hard motion forward, he could have maybe extracted whatever Red's defense was going to be. Um, he does it a little bit, but that's not very, it's not a very convincing moving forward. I think in this situation, if it was a hard motion forward, like ate a little bit more distance, knowing he's going to go back, I think that could have for sure baited something out of Red. Not bad. I mean, Red Red's pretty quick though, so it could be that he doesn't trust going into the distance. I think you should. He was gone to the body a couple times now with that right leg. I think if he switched targets and went to the head or did an inverted that inside kick. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was that was nice. If he did an inside kick there, um, inverted, that might work. But good job taking target here on the follow up. I almost I almost want to say blue does a good job of closing the distance, but the punch comes almost as an afterthought. If he expects Red to stand there, come in. I feel like the punch should be able to make contact. Good motion there. Um, nice punch by Red. I would say Red right now is getting... He's letting Blue dictate the match. He needs to switch things around and either inch forward like he is now and threaten with those hard cuts he was doing earlier. I don't know why he changed that. No oh, defend. Not bad. So a lot of the information I'm getting now is Blue has a good, wants to use that right leg on the inside. Red's doing a good job covering. I mean, if I were Red, I'd keep flicking to that body. Yeah, I was going to say keep flicking to that body because it seems Blue's blue strength looks like it's, it's coming from the right leg. The weakness and the small hole in the game is he's trying to get to that distance so fast and get to that, or rather he's getting, trying to get to that di that position so fast He's doing it a little bit too soon, and there's still space for Red's leg to come up as he's moving for that clinch, that push clinch kick. It's a little bit too early, and that's why Red's getting these points underneath his arms. I think there's opportunity where, or to deny that, an option you could do is when you slide all the way in, close the distance first, so that way they don't have opportunity to score. And then when you step your leg back, that's when you, that's you dictating the time to score. Um, like I said, Blue's doing it right now a little bit too early. Like, and I, I'm by a little bit too early, I mean like half a second too early. And that's where Red's able to get those pocket shots in. So good job by Red here. Even though he, Blue is dictating the pace of the match, uh, Red is doing a good job of finding his opportunities. He's, I think, in this situation. Blue or red knows that blue's right leg is coming, so he's throwing his left leg up there. One as a chance to score, but two also as a as kind of a block and a way to just mix up red's right leg because red's or, or 
Red's throwing his left leg up to mix up to A score, but B mix up his legs with Blue's, and Blue, I think, needs to switch legs to the other side, or at least faint on the other side to bait Red's either leg or arm to drop and then find opportunities that way. It seems like right now Red has uh, his defense against Blue dialed in. So what kind of adjustments would I have made? For Blue, doing a good job here, I think he needs to start looking for some more points on the outside game a little bit more before he blitzes for that inside. Uh, Red here, the only thing I'm seeing, because he's he's sneaking those points in Blue's weakness, which is his trying to close it too fast. Red here, I think, could also do the same. Try and look for a little bit more points on the outside. And it would be nice if he was dictating the pace of the match a little bit more. Uh, it's going back and forth. I feel like it's 60% toward Blue, 40% towards Red in terms of who's controlling the pace of the match. I'd like to see it leaning a little bit more. Obviously, you want to see it more in your favor. If you watch Dehun or any of those guys who are really, really good, they're always dictating the match matches against the opponent and not vice versa. Very rare is it vice versa. That's why he's fighting close stance. No! Oh, man, I was just praising you for blocking that, bro. It's still from the right leg. The red was able to get his... Get it. Red was able to get his right leg in there, but it was also because he changed target. Usually when red clinched, it was to the body. So that one may have snuck in because it was to the head. And by red, I mean blue. Blue's right leg, usually to the body. Got in there, went to the head, so it may have happened because he changed target. Red was expecting to the body or something. Nice, good follow. Oh, close, that's okay. Oh. Wait, did he score earlier and I missed? Oh, Blue had the... Hold on. 4-1, where did he get this body shot? Ah, uh, on the cut. Gotta keep covered. Great recovery by AG. He was in trouble there. We just take this first lead of the match. And he does it with his front leg. I wonder why red or blue, neither red nor blue really cancels that much. It's kind of interesting to see. Like a cancel may have been good there, right? I don't see, I mean, comment below if you guys see it. But I don't, I don't really see too much canceling going on, which could be a theoretical answer to this, but I don't know how good these guys cancel are. I don't know if they have offense based off of the cancel. So, like, I'm expecting this guy to cancel me and then do something. Good job by Red here sneaking another point. They're both really into the foot fence game right now. And trying to find... I feel like both their coaches said try more points from the outside. Blue realizing that I mean, if you're not all the way in, it's not going to score or change target. Red also, I think, doesn't want to fight Blues out in Crescent Kick, so maybe that's why he's fighting from the outside. Get yourself inward. Okay. We're stay there. Goodbye, Blue. Blue here is still dictating the pace of the match. Good stuff. I think if he followed up, so there's some instances here where it's it's very, very heavy right leg, which isn't necessarily bad, but in order to open up your right leg, sometimes you have to throw the left. So this is another situation where he's going in. He set this down here. There's possibility that if, if he was expecting to, expecting to use this leg just to switch it up, there's an opening here. He could just lift that up and go that way, right? But he's very keen on setting up this right leg of his. Uh, so that's what he goes with. So as you guys are learning as well, and as you guys enter the clinch situation, just because you have a favorite leg doesn't mean you shouldn't, you should only throw that leg. Sometimes you have to throw your bad leg or your leg that's not as good to open up for that other side. I like Blue's pressure here, keeping it on. Oh! Uh, 
or add an in to out crescent. That would also work great. So directionally, both attacks are coming from. So if I'm sparring against you right now, both attacks come from this side. So all Red has to do is have to get his arm up here and then watch to make sure the knee isn't so wide. Something you could do if you're really right leg centric is start to do either in out to the like the inside hook, that inside flip kick to the body Dehun does sometimes, that reverse kick or the in out crescent kick. So that way your legs at a different trajectory and hopefully your opponent's arms aren't already sitting there waiting for that kick to come in. A little bit more variation in the direction that blue is kicking. Is it good? All right. I mean, this is, I don't know how many fights they had to do, but they, they seem a little bit tired already. Kind of just waiting for the round to end. Anyone going to do a cheeky point? No. What's the adjustment? It seems like so. It seems to me like Red's pretty fatigued, so a lot of Red's gameplay may change. Uh, Blue, it's also harder because he's not dictating the pace of the match, so uh, that means he's getting caught mid breath. That means he's he has to be more mentally alert because he's on the reactionary side of the side of the game versus uh, Blue, who has been dictating. It. I'm sorry, Red has has been more. I'm like mixing up my Blue and Red today. Blue has been dictating. Red, it's taxing Red a little bit more because he's reactionary in the game. Adjustments for third round. For Blue, I would say you got to change the target a little bit. You can still use that right leg. Maybe throw that left leg in first a couple more times to make him conscious there and then switch it up and use that right again. For Red, uh, Blue seems like his distance game is a little bit better. F trying to get in and hit that mid, so not all the way into the clinch, but get into that mid distance and start fading before he gets into the full clinch, I think is the ideal situation. Um, a good example of that would be Dehun when he fought uh, Sindon again in the Grand Prix, not in the World Champs, but in the Grand Prix. Dehun a great adjustment against someone who had, who was stronger than him in the clinch. And so when Dehun got close, instead of engaging in the clinch, Dehun faded really far backwards and shot up also the body, up also the face. And I think he beat Sindon by like 40 points. So look up that fight, um, Sindon versus Lee Dehun, the Grand Prix, not the not the World Championship fight. So that's an example of what I'm talking about in this situation. You want to get close and then fade to prevent him fighting uh, in the clinch. Punch. Good job by Red to close that up. I think he's not necessarily ready for something on the inside. Nice try by Blue. Okay, interesting call. I would not have called that. Props to this cameraman for moving around. Oh, don't let him. Nice. No, it's you already know it's coming, man. I, it's hard when you're in the, in, on the edge like that. I always advise not to be on the edge. So, if you guys notice here, this is what I've been kind of harping on. So, here, boom. Red gets his, his point in. Good for him. He tries once, but the follow-up isn't immediate, right? He goes left, makes him conscious about that side, and then swoops in for the right leg again. Uh, that could just be because he's on the edge. It could be because Red's fallen over already. Uh, but, I, but following up with that left leg adds another dimension of mental pressure to the opponent. That was a nice, interesting punch. I don't know if they would score that now. It's kind of a punch is in a weird situation, weird spot in my opinion. Good slide cut kick there, just pushing Rogers back. Good nice, 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 nice. So that's what I was trying to say. This, this little, like he didn't, he didn't create the opportunity on his own, but he did capitalize on it here. Boom, nice up ball. And then uh, this, in this, there's a pocket shot right here that's available if he if he wanted to take it. Boom, right there. If he were to go down and then deliberately throw that leg up, that short off ball kick right there, I think it's open because there's literally no coverage. There's, you guys can see that right here. There's literally no coverage right there because he's very uh, blues, very, very focused on getting this right leg 
up to score that this bottom part under his hogu is open. So if he if Red had that little tiny flick that Dayun has or uh, a lot of the fin flyweights we're using, that's the prime prime spot you want to be shooting that at. Block. Kicking after, kicking after Kalyo? Really? I don't know about that. Oh, nice job by range, from range. Nice job from range by Blue. So good job. Uh, I like that because Blue kept this kind of in his pocket. He showed the, he showed this a little bit um, in the other rounds, but he didn't use it that much. Great work there. Good job by Blue there. Getting him on the edge, flicking to the face. Red's a little bit fatigued. So if you're a little bit fatigued, every now and then, like slightly more often than not, this seems like counterintuitive. But if you throw hard motions forward, it generally, if your opponent bites, buys you a few more seconds of recovery. So if I'm super tired and a hard motion forward, the other guy, assuming that you're good enough to get them to react, should react a little bit, and then we'll kind of ease back into place. But after you do that hard motion, you can go immediately to react, relaxing. That should buy you like one or two or three more seconds of recovery. And, you know, in this game, that's that's big. So that's a tip for you guys. Hard motion and throw, pretending like you're going to go on offense more often when you're tired. Put your opponent on the back foot. Allows you to breathe a little bit more. Uh, in Kidun or something, kick right on the Kalyo. Yeah, Not in Kidun, sorry. Um, what's his name? Who's the welterweight? The welterweight from Korea. Um, dude, that that scrappy dude that that's always in there. Uh, I forgot his name is escaping me right now. But the welterweight from Korea does a really good job of the game will be tight in the last 10, 15, or whatever seconds. Right on the right as the ref is going up. Um, he's kicking to try and get that two points. And sometimes he's winning by those two, three, four points, whatever. He scores right on the reset. So that's also an opportunity for you guys that I don't see either of these guys really maximizing. Nice try. Nice try. Don't let him push you backwards. Oh, nice. That's that's the timing I was talking about. Um here, by the, by the way. And good by Blue to follow up. Boom. Gonna force him out. Go for. He's going for headshots here soon. Yeah. Down by two. National team is two points away. Let's see if Red can come back. Oh, no. Call for a card. No. So that's what I'm talking about. That's the... Uh, it's not Inky done. It's one of the other Koreans. Right when he says go, boom. That's that's the timing I was talking about. So good on Blue for doing this. If I were Red's coach, this would have been card time. I don't know if you have the card, but this would have been time to use the card. If your player's breathing hard, which happens because Taekwondo is like the seventh hardest sport in the, all the Olympics, this is the time to pull the card. I, it could be for any, like literally anything. It could be a replay of him stepping out of bounds. But those 15, 10, 15 seconds sometimes is all sometimes all the time your player needs to rally back to get the points. Oh, man. No. Oh, maybe he doesn't have a card. That's unfortunate. Lose stamina here is just overpowering him. And for you guys who are wondering about the stamina, I think I believe this is in Colorado Springs, though, so the elevation is not like it is when you're fighting at sea level. This is you gas faster. Oh, red is yeah. Red's too tired to cover this. Good on blue. I think blue here very strong. Yeah, right out of time. Good job on blue. Um, they're fighting Colorado Springs, which means the elevation is higher. There's less air, so it could be that uh, maybe red had harder fights. It could be that maybe he didn't prep elevation enough, which is hard to do if you don't live in the area. I understand there's like financial restrictions. 
Um, I've looked at others. I've, I've tried the training masks. That one actually does it. It helps you breathe better. Like there, you have intercostal muscles that are you, I believe they're called intercostals. My dad is escaping me, but they help you breathe better to train you that way, but they don't actually do anything for in terms of like elevation training, increasing your blood cell count, all that good stuff. So it could be that maybe red hot harder fights. Maybe the fights were a lot closer. Could be that blue just has better stamina overall. Could be that uh, blue had time to train at elevation and not. So a lot of the points at the end, I think, were slip ups by red mentally as he, the fatigue was wearing in. Um, blue did a good job starting to mix it up in the clinch, and I specifically like the sequence here, where he, um, when he got him on the edge, he hit the head, he hit the head shot, even though uh, red got the first point. And then over here, he secured the win by going right on the, uh, on the whatever their zoom match command is and score it. And like that really secured it. Imagine if he didn't score that right now, that'd be a minus three. Oh, well, I mean, it's, it's still pretty far cause he scored the other two, but in general, uh, going for those points kind of, especially near the end of the match are really good. And the only hole I'd say for blue to cover up would be not to go for that, um, clinch kick too soon because that's where he's being open and he was doing a good job in the third round of mixing it up but if I think if he made that a little bit more common in his arsenal there'd be a lot more points going up earlier in the rounds Red he did a pretty good job um, initially and then I think in the second half of the first round and onward he kind of let Blue dictate the match which may have added to why he's so fatigued he did a pretty good job with his front leg scoring on the points as he's coming in uh, but I think there's other times where he could maybe have scored, maybe went to the head, and there's certainly some opportunities when Blue's closing the distance where he could have snuck in a couple more off-ball shots. Um, but overall, good match by these two guys. I don't know either of them. I, I With the pixels, I can't really recognize the coaches. And I haven't been on the U.S. Taekwondo scene in super long, so I might not even know these coaches. But overall, um, great fights by these players. Congratulations to Blue for making national team. And um, that's it for today, guys. See you guys next time. Oh, also, also, please like and subscribe. I have to say that now. Um, it really helps my the algorithm out, um, get these videos out to more people who are interested in Taekwondo. And I'd really appreciate it. Thank you, and see you guys next time.